Good evening. Welcome to our TI Technology webinar hosted by Texas Instruments. It's hard to believe that the end of March is here and you know that means April's going to fly by and then May and your IB exams will be fast upon you. So isn't it great that Dan's going to talk about are you and your students ready for the IB exam? This is part one, which means there's going to be another session a bit later. Dan will tell us more about that as we go along. I'm Ruth Casey. I'll be the host tonight. I don't have a lot to do or say, but I enjoy watching and um, interacting with you throughout the event. Um, we're expecting quite a few people. So if you want to join along in the chat panel, if that's an option on your device, you could go ahead and try it out now. Maybe send out a greeting to everyone. Tell us your location. In the drop down menu, choose everyone. Uh, we'll give that a try. A reminder, this session is being recorded and it'll be available for viewing and reviewing later. If you have any audio or video issues that you can't resolve during the session, just tune back in later. You'll get email as a registered participant, and that email will tell you um, that the recording is available and it will tell you how to get the documents for, for the session. All right, I'm, I'm looking at the, um, at the chat panel, enjoying everything that's there. If you use social media and you want to share what you're learning today, there are some opportunities there for you to do that. And we're so pleased to have an outstanding educator with us as the presenter tonight. If you've joined us for previous IB webinars, you go, yay, we're back. And if this is your first, you are in for it. What a great treat. Daniel Wilkie, thank you so much. Say hi to everybody and tell us about yourself. Hello, everyone. Uh, as Ruth said, we are we are very happy to be back. Uh, it's been, I have to say, about a year since we have done a webinar uh, for IBNTI. And I am just thrilled to be back with, with all of you. And hopefully, we can share some information. Um, my name, as Ruth said, is Daniel Wilkie, and I am an IB math teacher in Greenville, South Carolina. My school is called Christ Church Episcopal School. Uh, right now, I am currently teaching uh, IB um, AASL, uh, and I am a moderator for the uh, AI uh, exploration, and I also am a grader for the AI, an examiner for the AI paper one. Uh, time zone one. I don't know. I got. I got to look at that. I don't remember which time zone I'm. I'm in. Uh, so I definitely keep busy with IB. Uh, I've done um, many of these webinars over the past three years. We have tried to, as as we've made the switch from, you know, the old curriculum to the new curriculum. We tried to ease that uh, that pain uh, by offering webinars to t discuss the changes and see what TI is is doing for everybody. Um, and so uh, these webinars have been nice. We've had, you know, usually a good anywhere between 75 and 125 participants uh, come to our webinars and, and share information, ask good questions. And that's what I would like from all of you tonight is that, uh, yes, I'm going to try to give you some tips and tricks and, and stuff that has helped me in my classrooms and stuff that I've learned from other teachers, but I want to have this as an open forum to collaborate. So if you have a good idea or if you if I've missed something uh, or I just haven't covered something deep enough, ask questions, share your information and we'll we'll help everybody who's here. So I, I'm a, I don't consider myself the end all be all expert with respect to TI and IB. Uh, I have been teaching IB for now. This is my 18th year and um, it, is, it is some of my favorite classes to teach. But you, I'm always learning new things and I love learning new things. I love hearing what people have to say. So I'm going to try to give you my information. But if you have something and you'd like to share, please do uh, put it in the chat room. Ask questions. Uh, if I don't catch it, I try to look at it as I'm speaking. But Ruth also tries to catch it. So uh, we'll try our best to do that. But but just share, ask questions and uh, hopefully we'll have a good time here today. 
So, um, but I mean, just to kind of a quick overview of what we're going to be doing uh, after now that we've introduced ourselves. And, and I've seen, I just want to say that there's two things that I love about these webinars. One, I recognize names from last year, so people have returned, which makes me happy. And then two, uh, I love seeing where everybody is from. You know, when you see people from honestly all over the world attending, uh, and you really don't know what time of day or night it is there, and I, I just love that. Uh, it is, you know, 8 o'clock here or 8.05 here in South Carolina, which I know is different in many places. But uh, what we're going to cover today, uh, just a quick, quick overview of the exam structure. Uh, I did see that there are some newbies, uh, some new faces and new, new people teaching. Uh, and I didn't know if you were aware of the structure of the exam. Hopefully you've gone through training and have seen that. But I just thought I'd do that real quick. And then uh, I do want to show you what we're doing on the TI website. Because for the last three years, this has been my, you know, a, a passion project of mine over COVID uh, and beyond. Uh, we've been really beefing up a, a TI slash IB website uh, for you to use and get some information and helpful activities and questions out of. So we'll go real quick over that. But then we'll spend the vast majority of time tonight going over our topics one, two, and three. Uh, tips and tricks from IB exams. Now, you know, we're not an officially sanctioned IB exam team here. Uh, so, I mean, if, if people have questions on past exams, I can kind of help you out. Uh, I'm not really allowed to share that information as an examiner, uh, but uh, there are questions on the TI website that we can go through tips and tricks. I have written those questions uh, to help you all out and, and help my students out as well. Uh, so we can go through some some things with that. And again, we, we're going over topics one, two, and three. Ruth said that this was only part one uh, of our seminar series, our webinar series. We're going to have our second webinar uh, coming up in April. I think it is April 13th. Uh, I think that's the date uh, for that. Um, and I'm double checking real quick here. Uh, but we are going to do topics four and five for that. Uh, yes, it's the 13th. So it's April 13th for five, topics four and five. Uh, so if you have questions on any of these topics, you know, jot them in the, the chat. Um, send me an email. I'll put my email address at the end so you can send me an email. Or if you're going to join us for the second webinar and you said, oh, can you please highlight this? You know, give me some tips that you want me to focus on and I will do that in a couple of weeks. Uh, because again, I think the more that we can collaborate, because I already saw that in the chat uh, window that people are said, let's collaborate. And I love that because that's what this is all about. I'm going to help you. You're going to help me. Everybody's going to help everybody. Uh, and that's what I love about teaching. That's what I love about TI. And, you know, IB, you know, does a really good job of making connections around the world. So if we get to do all that, then, you know, we will have had a successful night. So are we ready to get things going? Ruth, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. We are ready to get things going. I'll be here as backup. Awesome. Let's share. Doke. All right. So the first thing I would like to just uh, quickly show you is what we've been doing on the TI website. Um, and as I do this, I want to make sure that I can still see the chat uh, in case there's any questions. Okay, good. Uh, so on the TI website, if you go to education.ti.com, uh, that's where you'll find everything you need to know about where you can purchase stuff, where you can download activities, where you can get your OS updates, anything like that is all on here. So there are two places you can get our IB information. Uh, that is if you go to activities, all right, um, Actually, wait a minute. There used to be there. Okay. Uh, I am. Uh, so let's go back here. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What is happening here? That used to be there. Huh. Um, yes, Daniel, I noticed today there were some <laughs> running changes from when we looked at it yesterday. So. I looked at it uh, hey. yesterday. <laughs> It's great that these things are being updated. <laughs> what that that is kind of amazing that I the first thing that I'm going to show you it is not there. 
Um, so, uh, <laughs> uh, wow, that is now I'm just at a, at a loss because it used to be we can go to, um, hmm. so let's see if we can go to math resources and see if it's there. All right. Um, okay. You know, I am at a loss. So, Ruth, I'm going to actually uh, move on. If you can look for that, um, that would be fantastic because yesterday it was all there. Uh, yesterday and... it was there. So, we will find it again. Yes, please do that. I just, that was really weird that that is. Oh, wait a minute. I found it. Maybe. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, so that was not what it was, you know, <laughs> uh, just yesterday when I was prepping for this, doing my last minute preps. So when I went to, um, uh, so I went to my activities or, uh, <laughs> this was awesome. Um, so after I went to my uh, math resources or excuse me, activities, I went then to all classroom activities. And then down at the bottom, we have our resources for IB math teachers. So I'm going to have to question, you know, where they move that stuff to. Uh, but once we click here, this is what we get for our website. Uh, sorry for that little several minute hiccup there. Um, that was just changed. Anyways, so I'll put the link our resources. The... Excuse me. I'll put the link in the uh, the uh, the new link in the chat if it hasn't already gotten there. I think I, I think somebody it. beat me to it. Yes. Thank you so much. So that was really weird. Um anyways, so looking down here, uh we have our two different um courses that we have. We have the analysis and approaches, applications and interpretations. So if you click on those, those are the activities that uh, have been created. I like I said I've been spending the last 3 years uh either creating new activities or updating old TI activities to fill, fit the IB model. Uh, so we do roughly about 12 new and updated activities every year. Uh, so they're really starting to grow, which I love. Uh, so down here at the bottom, here's where you could log in uh, and sign up, register for our webinars. So the live webinars are on the left here, uh, and then the ones that we have done in the past, they're on the right. So there's there's a ton of them. There's the ones, all the ones that I did, and some of the ones from Europe and Australia that are also very useful. So if you want to check those out, there's some very good information uh, with a lot of excellent teachers leading those. So again, if you want to register for April 13th's uh, webinar, then you would click on the register for free uh, for that. Now, since several of you said that you were kind of in the AI group, uh, I'll just click on the Browse Activities real quick just to kind of show you what we're looking at. And the way it's broken down, uh, you can either select a topic or you can select your uh, your technology. And what you're seeing are all the different activities that we have either updated uh, or created new uh, for IB and TI. And the good news is what we've been trying to do since uh, the uh, activities sometimes are in the 84, Sometimes they're in the Inspire. What I've been doing is making them so that you can do the same activity on either platform for your classes, depending on what teacher you're, you are. Um, and so uh, that's, and if you click on any of them, so if you're an 84 or an Inspire user, so the ones in dark blue are your 84. And then as you scroll down, the ones that are kind of in the lighter blue are your Inspire. Uh, but you can differentiate between those and you'll notice that some of them have this new and updated. Those are the ones that we have currently in the last year have either added as brand new or that they have been updated to kind of fit the IB model. Uh, I know several people in the past uh, when we did our webinars the last two years, they've always asked for amortization uh, activity. So I created one of those for people to kind of work with. Uh, and what you'll notice when you open up or click on the activity, you will see that you have a zip file with every file that you'll need, but you'll also have both PDF and uh, doc uh, documents for uh, the student activity, your teacher notes to kind of help you along, 
and then of course the IB question, which is what we're going to focus a lot of our attention on uh, today. And sometimes you'll have uh, an Inspire activity with it. Sometimes you'll have an 84 document with it. So it just depends. They don't all have those, but some of them do. Uh, so you'll notice that you know you give a little overview here, but then um, you know really down here is where you're going to click on the activities. So, and every activity has an IV question that goes with it. We have currently, um, I think, the 50 to 75 activities for you to kind of peruse at your leisure. And every one of them has their own IB question. So, what I did is I tried to, you know, I searched and searched for different types of models to use for my IB questions to try to, and I gave you not only the question, but then the mark scheme that goes with it. And, and what I love about it is if you like the question and you want to keep using it and you can alter it, you can use the doc and then just change it however you want to change it. Uh, so you can kind of use the same model, but change the numbers, uh, that sort of thing. If you want to use them for tests or just review for your kids. Um, but like I said, we got 50 to 75 questions uh, for you to use. Now, I know there's uh, testing software out there uh, that you can use and, and create assessments or reviews with. Uh, but this is all free. This is what TI is doing for you, uh, for you to use uh, kind of again. Uh, and if if you have feedback on the questions, I would love, love, love them. Um, so if you see something that you like or see something that I hate to say this, but I've made mistakes, you know, here and there. <laughs> but if you see something like that, let me know. We can easily fix it. Um, uh, so just yeah, just any help is great. But that's all there for you to use. So that's pretty much what IB is doing. And like I said, we kind of go through, we, we add about 12 new and updated activities each year. Um, and, you know, I, I would love your feedback on any of them if you use them, if you don't, uh, if there's a topic that you would love to see, because uh, that's how I've created them, like this one right here that I have open. So many of you have said, oh, can we do one of these activities? So I finally put that in the rotation. So just... Uh, if when at the end, I'm going to give you my email address, if you have ideas, or if you want to see something, just send them to me and, and I'm going to add you to the list uh, for next year, next round of, of our activities. Okay, so that's what TI has to offer you on the website. Uh, and what we're going to do now is we're going to go through just some a breakdown of, of the exams and then topics one, two, and three, just some little tips and tricks that, you know, over the last week, I was just kind of going through my calculator at my calculators, my 84 and Inspire, and just kind of saying, what is the most useful things that you can do in topic one and two and three with the calculator? Because, you know, as you know, if you're in the AA course, you know, you do have calculator and no calculator portions of the exam. But if you're in the AI course, you can have it the whole time. Now, does that mean you're going to use it the whole time? Not necessarily. But if your students can use this technology, uh, why not show them how to use it? So, you know, 90 minutes or 60 minutes is not always that long, and we want them to be efficient and go as, as quickly as they possibly can. So, uh, so what are we going to look at here? Uh, so just a quick breakdown of the exam for those people who uh, were unsure. Uh, so the standard level, uh, and this goes for both, you know, the AAAI situation, um, you know, they are broken up into, you know, two papers. All right, for standard level, paper one, paper two. AA, of course, is non-calculator. Uh, and AI, of course, calculators use. Now, they, when they went over to the new curriculum, they reduced the amount of marks. Uh, they didn't reduce the time. They reduced the number of marks. And so hopefully that was, you know, a little alleviate some, some of the stress for students. So they lowered it from 90 to 80 marks. Uh, so that's, you know, um, uh, honestly... Uh, to because to, I always went by the one minute per mark uh, rule with my students. I still kind of go by that. So and they still have a little buffer there now. Uh, but um, just kind of remind them of that, that, you know, it's 80 marks for 90 minutes uh, for paper one, paper two uh, for your standard level. And, you know, for AA, it's non-calculator calculator, AI calculator, the whole thing. Uh, and for the higher level, all right, you also have um, you have your paper one, oops, sorry, paper one, paper two, and then a paper three, which uh, I spent, I was lucky enough over Thanksgiving to spend several days um, in Australia. So I was, I was at a, we had an IBTI conference. They asked if I can come over and present and I, and it was honestly an amazing, amazing time. And I just loved hearing from, from 
you know, teachers from around the world and how they do things uh, because they had just finished their exam because it was the end of their school year. They were just about to go into summer. And so just to get their feedback and and to get them talking about the paper three, which is so different now. So really, it's two very large questions. Um, that's they try to piece it together as best as possible. And when we just kind of sat down, because there was a group of about 15 of us, 20 of us just kind of talking about paper three. And it was it was illuminating because it was so new. And my school is going to be offering that AI higher level next year. And so we got to sit down and talk about that, what the teachers thought of it. And it was just it was so nice. And it's what these sessions, what these webinars should be about is sharing information, how how we look at it, how we feel about it, uh, that sort of thing. So um, just any information that you can, you know, share with one another. And I love the fact that some of you are putting your email addresses in there because you want to collaborate. Please do. Uh, because, you know, there are some tough, tough things in here for your students. And, you know, I know we have some excellent students in our classes, but all of us, all of us can use help. OK, uh, so that's basically the standard level or higher level breakdown for those people who were interested in that and how it was split up. Uh, but let's really kind of jump into. Um, So don't forget to, um, we're going to jump into some different things that we can do on the calculator. And just if you hadn't seen it uh, with respect to the higher level, all right, so you know that, you know, for paper one and paper two, the number of marks again has been reduced. So it went from 120 to 110 uh, and that, you know, there, but it's still two hours long for those. And again, with respect to um, uh, the percentages are, are a little bit different. Uh, with uh, compared to the standard level uh, and then paper three, you know, you have that 55 mark, which it used to be um, a 60 marker. Uh, so that has been kind of reduced a little, uh, but just kind to uh, just remember the, um, the, the slight differences there with the higher level and the, and the paper one, two and three uh, with that. So uh, jumping into, um, and I got a quick question for everybody. Uh, you know, and if you can kind of just in the chat room real quick, uh, I would love to see, you know, what, where do we fall mostly? Are we Inspire users? Are we 84 users? So if you can just do a quick little, you know, type in there in the chat so we can kind of see. Okay. Um, oh, hi, Jim. <laughs> I saw that you're here. <laughs> All right, uh, so let's see, Inspire 84, Inspire, Inspire 84, 84. Uh, so it looks like we have a good split. Uh, then we finished off with a bunch of 84s. Okay, uh, so that's good. So the stuff that we're gonna go over, uh, I'm gonna try to highlight in both, you know, the 84 and the Inspire. So uh, you can kind of get a taste of both of them, whichever one you use. And don't forget that, uh, to not that you would ever forget, uh, I have an IB coordinator at my school who never lets me forget uh, that your calculators, especially the Inspires, you know, they have to be in a test mode uh, where things are sh shut off. So please don't forget to do that before your exam. All right. And there's also a new way to enter a code in uh, to kind of put it in IB test mode as well. Uh, so please don't forget that if you if you use the the, the coding system. Uh, for that, but uh, check your your IB uh, information, your materials. They actually have a list of what should be turned on or what should be turned off, you know, for the Inspire, and that your 84 needs to be reset and um, you know all the memory cleared, that sort of thing. So please don't forget that. Okay, so let's jump in and and here's some stuff that you know I was kind of looking through uh, as you know with the Inspire and the uh, 84 uh, plus. So there are some things that I just kind of broke down with respect to topic one, two, and three that may that may help you uh, if you didn't already know it. Uh, I was just working, I was just teaching a vectors um, uh, class with my pre-cal class, and uh, they were dealing with a very difficult uh, tension problem where a big object was being lifted, and they were trying to find the tension uh, if two cranes were pulling them. 
uh, and they were really stuck with with how to solve for the tensions or the magnitudes. And um, it led me, it was a perfect timing for this because it led me to reviewing how to do solving systems of equations or simultaneous equations on the calculator. And it just got me thinking, you know, well, how can I do that on the Inspire? How can I do that on the 84? Uh, and there's quick ways to do stuff like that. And so these are the things that if you ever think about them as you're teaching, uh, it's great to jot them down so you can kind of review with your kids because honestly, they remembered how to do it by hand. They remembered how to do elimination or substitution, that sort of thing by hand. But if they can do it on the calculator and if there's a way to quickly get it done, when you have spare just very few minutes to get it done, why not show them? Why not, you know, why not have an extra way to do it? So if it's a quick problem, they can do it in, the, in about 30 seconds and then move on to another question. All right, uh, so let's just jump right into topic one, which is numbers and algebra. Uh, and so, you know, one thing that my IB class always asks me is about, you know, that how do I get my numbers to, to show up the correct number of digits, you know? Uh, so I know there's significant figures, issues, you know, all the time. Um, and just, you know, we, we know the default is that it's supposed to be three significant figures. Um, uh, but just bear in mind that if students, if the question does not ask, for a specific rounding, okay, that it does not, it's it's okay for students to just write down what they see, okay, on the uh, calculator screen. So they don't have to necessarily put it in three significant figures. So if they just wrote down everything they see, that that's okay. You know, that's something that's accepted. Now, there's some exceptions to that. So if you ever deal with, you know, some finance type questions, you know, students are expected to round to those two decimal places even if the question does not say it. So please make sure you're aware of that. Um, but again, some of my students, they, they get so flustered with three significant figures because some of them have really good science teachers that really go into depth in them. Uh, and some of them just come into my class and say, I don't know what to do. It's just, it's, it's too difficult for me. Uh, so having them, set, having them just write down the entire number, um, you know, that's sometimes alleviates some stress uh, from then, especially if the question is not asking them to round two, three significant figures. But uh, so you're just looking at uh, the different calculators. How do I set the calculators to show a certain number of digits? Okay, so for those people who don't know, on the Inspire, okay, and I apologize, my class is still going from earlier today. Um, well, this was one of my questions that I had today. Uh, so we uh, if we just go to, you know, just going to the doc and then the settings and then document settings. All right, here's where we can display the number of digits. Okay, so you'll notice we have the floating digits. We have the fixed digits. Okay, me personally, I just have it on float. Okay, I don't really change that uh, because if I show everything that's fine in my book, then I can round if I necessarily have to round. Uh, so I just put it on the float. Now, for some students, they when they go to a specific science class, they have to put it to a certain number of digits. That's fine. But please know that, you know, when you go back and forth between math and science, that that might have to be changed. OK, so um, that's where we can kind of change that. Uh, but this is also, you know, from this screen, we can kind of change things into our um, our angle measure, even though that can be done on the screen. But this is where we kind of change our formatting and our document settings. Uh, so just be aware that this is, uh, I always have students, especially uh, this frustrates the heck out of me because I have the um, the CAS calculators in my class uh, because uh, if you weren't aware of this, you can turn off the CAS function on the calculators. I wish the ACT would understand that, that you can turn off that CAS function so that that can be used on the exam. But hey, you know, hopefully that'll change in the future. But um, having said that, uh, here you can turn your cast mode on and off, uh, but you can also change um, which the calculation mode drives my students crazy. Um, oh, the ACT is going digital, so I see. Thank you uh, for that. So I can't wait for that day um, when everything is digital. It's funny because uh, before the pandemic, uh, IB was actually discussing that. You know, when is IB actually going to? go over to the digital platform and um, 
I actually thought it was going to be happening by now, but because of the pandemic, I don't know when that's ever going to happen. Uh, I haven't heard more of that. Um, so uh, just it, it should be coming in the future, but I don't know when. Um, but yeah, so that, that'll change things. What can you use now when everything's all digital? Are they going to give you the calculator on the screen? Uh, and I know TI is trying to work with more and more of these standardized tests because there are now online calculators available to you and your students uh, for both the 84 and the Inspire. Uh, so that's, they know it's coming. So, you know, they're trying to also stay with that, uh, with all the other online calculators that are out there. Uh, but yes, TI has its own version of that as well. Uh, but one thing that really, really drives me crazy uh, with the calculation mode is, uh, you know, the default setting is the auto. And so it always gives students the answer of, you know, if you put in the sine of 30, it'll give you the cosine of 60, uh, which drives them nuts. So um, they are very frustrated when it comes to, you know, how do I get the decimal answer? How do I get that equivalent? And, you know, hitting control enter is just too much for them to remember. Um, so I, I sh make sure they know that this is where you change your calculation mode. If you want the approximate answer, it changes to approximate. You always get the decimal. Okay, and so we kind of spend some time on that. But that's something you can have them do as soon as they get into the exam is because once you put it in that test mode, it's going to put it in a certain mode and you can kind of go in and change that uh, if you need to. Okay, uh, so just kind of be aware of that. All right. Okay, so looking at that, so how do we do that same thing on the 84? So jumping on there. Um, so we are going to get out of that, all right? So if we go to the mode button, of course, you'll see that uh, right down at the uh, third line here, we have the float. Uh, and so this is where you can kind of change to see how many digits you want. So either float or tell them the number of digits, but this is kind of like the setting screen uh, that we were just in in the uh, uh, 84. So just make sure you go to mode for that, okay? Um, to get to there. But again, uh, this is just, most of you all know this. I just thought I'd do a quick little uh, review of that. Uh, so looking at that, that's also where you can kind of change to scientific notation. So little things that you should know uh, about examinations, and I don't know if your students know this, and this goes for uh, when they're writing on the exam, okay, and when they're writing their IAs, okay, scientific notation on the calculator is different than what's expected of them okay, uh, when they are writing um, in a paper or in the exam. Uh, so you know how on the, if you type in on your calculator, so it doesn't matter which one, if I'm at the, at the 84, okay, so please remember that the, uh, the EE button, okay, so if we're doing three times 10 to the 12th power, so three, and then we're gonna get the EE button times 10 to the 12th, whoops, that was not right, so, sorry about that. It's going to be 12. Okay, so it would, we'd do 3e to the 12th. Now that's on the calculator. Uh, and I can't tell you how many times I see people writing that on the exam or in their IA and they get marked down for that. Okay, so they have to actually write it in the correct 3 times 10 to the 12th power. Okay, so they can't get away with just using the what's on the calculator screen. So just be aware of that. Reiterate that for their kids that week leading up to the exam uh, so they don't get dinged for, for, for that. So we don't want to see the E notation, okay, for scientific notation. We want to see the times 10 to the, uh, to the exponent, okay? Uh, so please be aware of that. Um, and then, you know, just on the Inspire, uh, just I would love for everybody to be very familiar with the menu button. Uh, so since we're dealing with numbers and algebra, you know, what is under the, the numbers, you know? So uh, now it's different, uh, not really on the number screen. We have all this for, for either calculator, uh, but how to convert to a decimal, back to fraction, that sort of thing. So there's a lot going on here and there's nothing wrong with taking a class period and just playing around with these tools. Because some things that will be beneficial to you, some will kind of are really not useful for us when we take an IB exam. Uh, but again, there's stuff on here for everybody to kind of play around with. Uh, I know the biggest one that my students use here, um, 
is when they're trying to go between fractions and, and, and decimals. Uh, not that you really need to do it here, but you know that, that's where they're doing that. But again, explore. Have your kids look through this to see what's, I mean, is it useful to find a least common multiple or greatest common divisor? All right. Um, so those things could be potentially useful in some questions. Uh, just sit down with them and, and kind of go through it with them. Uh, but it really just takes a few minutes of exploring. I always give my kids the freedom when we have, you know, a few minutes of downtime, they should be looking at their calculator, uh, not their phones, and they should be just playing around with different things. Uh, and if you don't know what to type in, you can always go to the catalog, okay? And everything in the catalog um, that's in the number, you can just click on it and it'll tell you exactly what to put uh, in the bottom, uh, which is, you know, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And then if you do the same thing with the 84, uh, if you're going to the math button, all right, so this is where we're going to spend time, you know, going over to the num. So what do they have here with respect to the num? They have very similar things, okay? You'll see the greatest common divisor. You see the remainder, see the fractions, decimals, that sort of thing. All that's there under that same screen. So both calculators have this for you to explore and use, hopefully to make your lives easier, okay? Oh, and I love that. Yes, yes, yes. And basically, as part of the IB curriculum, you know, that's technically what your kids should be doing with their technology. All right, you should be using different forms of technology um, and get information try, and have them. And this is the greatest thing. Uh, and that's why I love the Inspire. And sorry, 84 users. It's just something I love to do with the Inspire is when a kid learns something, that maybe is new to the class, I will have them demonstrated to the class, but I can do that, you know, uh, for those people who have Inspires using the Navigator system. Uh, so basically we just, I, I let them all log in and I pick a student to kind of show us everything and they get to, to teach everybody. And for some reason, the kids pick it up quicker when it's technology and they're showing it to them. You know, they seem to, you know, buck the system when I'm trying to show them. Uh, but when another student shows them, they kind of get more invested in it. So, uh, and, and I'm not saying you can't do that because you can have a kid come up to the board. Uh, if you have a Promethean board or, you know, something like that, you can have them do it with the, you know, um, with the, the, the TI, uh, the 84 uh, software as well. So it doesn't really matter the calculator. I just prefer the Inspire just because of that wonderful navigator feature uh, with that. Okay. Uh, so again, so looking at... Uh, just going through topic one, we also have logs. Uh, so just pointing out the two different, so if we're on the Inspire, uh, it's set up a little different than the 84. So the log features, you know, we have, you know, hitting control and then either the E to the X, uh, or if we, you know, hit control and then the 10 to the X, those are our two log features, all right, to play around with. Uh, so those are the uh, LN, of course, is the base E and the uh, log button, is the any base log. Okay, so play around with those. Um, also, I love having students play with those in the graphing feature too, to have them be able to graph that very quickly and easily. Uh, and then the play around with, you can have your students, uh, you know, verify, you know, their, if they're expanding or condensing logs, you know, using their properties of logs, you can have them verify if what they got is equal to what they started with uh, by typing it into the calculator. Uh, because both calculators, the 84 and the Inspire, have wonderful features that if you type in an equation like that with what it started with and what you finished with and have them equal one another, it'll tell you if it's true or false, okay? It'll give you that true or false or one or zero answer if you're on the 84. So have them play around with that, okay, um, to, to, to test their abilities. Now, the 84 uh, with the log buttons, you know, you have your uh, very quick and easy, just log and LN, they're right there. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, and that's that's the argument I get from my students that the 84 is better because they have their buttons there and you don't have to hit, you know, second or control to, to get to them. Uh, I love having wonderful discussions like that with my students. Uh, there's a, amazing. OK, so uh, again, just real quick with that. Um, so just kind of moving along with some things uh, and then, of course, the finance app. So please, please, please. Make sure you use the finance app because IB has actually 
come over to the technology side with respect to the finance app, uh, which is fabulous because if you are on the 84 and you go to the apps and the finance thing is right there, first thing there, all right? And honestly, there's a whole bunch going on this screen, uh, but you know, if we type in the one, this is the screen that students will use. Uh, so looking at this now, at, in the past, you know, IB was looking for here using the equation and try to plug into there and finding your answer. Now they're all about, you know, actually using the finance solver on the calculator. So when you look at the mark scheme, you're actually seeing the mark scheme as these are the values that you should be putting in this um, in the finance solver. So you will get points for putting in the values correctly. Now, you also still have the equation option to, to, to do your finance, but I love the fact that IB is now saying, okay, you know, we know you're going to use the finance solver. These are the numbers that you should be putting in there. So please make sure you're using that finance solver, and please make sure you remember just a couple little things on this is that the interest, okay, it's the percentage, and that's why they have the percent here is because it's the percent that goes there. You don't have to convert it to a decimal. And then your previous, your, your present value, future value, you know, don't forget that if you're trying to find one or the other, so if you have a previous looking for future, have a future looking for, you, one of them has to be a positive, one has to be a negative. So, and if you ever look on the mark scheme for um, when, you're, when you're grading or looking them over, you'll always see like a plus or minus next to them. So uh, please make sure that your students know about the plus or minus situation uh, going on there. And the same thing can be found uh, on the Inspire, if we go to ma uh, menu and then finance, and then we have the finance solver, and we have it pretty much the same setup, just in boxes uh, there for the finance solver. All right, uh, moving along. I'm, I'm I'm sorry if I'm going real quick because I want to save at least ten minutes at the end to to show you some questions and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> My dog just chased my cat and scared. You can see my cat just jumped up on my, <laughs> my chair. Scared me a little bit. Sorry about that. Um, all right, so topic two, uh, looking at the numeric solver. So for both the uh, Inspire and the 84, because if you go on the Inspire, you have, let me get out of the, uh, so if we go to menu and then now algebra. Now, again, my window is open for the CAS version. Uh, of course, much of this stuff is going to be turned off before the exam. Really, only the things that will be open are number six, seven, and eight. So the numerical solve, the solving systems of equation, okay, and then um, let me get out of that, and then the polynomial tools, okay. So those three things will be available uh, for students. So and which I love, okay, because the numerical solve that's very simple, straightforward. You know, you type in you know your equation. Um, so if you're just going to type in, you know, your 3x plus 1 equals 5, and then you're going to solve for x, you know, it gives you that answer very easy, very quick, and painless. And that goes for the uh, 84 as well. On the 84, uh, if we go to math, and then down at the bottom of math, you'll see at letter C is the, the numeric solver. Okay, uh, so the question is, you know, what happens if you want to solve a more complex, you know, equation? So, I mean, can you can you still use the end solve and put in, you know, something um, like a, a, a quadratic or something like that? Uh, so if I were to uh, do the same thing, menu, algebra, and then numerical solve, could I type in x squared? Okay, and then minus four equals zero. Would it give me a, an answer if I was going to solve a quadratic? And the answer is yes. It'll give you one numerical answer. Okay, so hopefully uh, if your students need to check something real quick, they could still do it, but um, it's not going to give you every answer. Okay, now there are features on the Inspire Cast that can give you that. Um, but those are turned off, so it's not available to the students uh, going through. Uh, so yes, you can solve, but um, yeah, you, you saw the result there. All right, so looking at, you know, we have the numerical solve. Uh, it's on both calculators. What about the solving systems of equation? Is that available for both? And this is something that I, I really like th that TI is doing 
is they try to, you know, the Inspire is a wonderful calculator and has made the 84 better, uh, if you can believe that. So everything that the Inspire can do, it has now boosted up the 84 and they've put, they've added stuff to the 84 to actually be on more of a level playing field uh, with the non-cast version. So, so I really think that the Inspire has made the 84 a better calculator uh, because it, when you're on the Inspire, you can go to Menu, Algebra, Solving Systems, and yes, you're going to be able to solve a system of linear equations on the Inspire. All right, and it's very easy just typing it in. I did this with my, my vector students, you know, today when we, were, we had to solve a system of equation. Uh, and they were blown away, like, oh, I didn't know it could do that. And they, you know, what, the, what they said to me is, I wish my 84 could do that. And your 84 can do that, okay? Not many people know where it's located uh, because they spend so much time in this. This is where they spend their time in the math button. All right, so math has all the stuff that is very useful and very, uh, it's, it's basically where we spend most of our time. Um, uh, so if you're in the regular type of math class, not a statistics class, you're spending most of your time right here. But um, where it's located is it's in the apps button. Okay, so down here at number nine, you'll see this PLYSMLT2. All right, and what that means is you can do your polynomial solving and your simultaneous equation solving down there at number nine. So if I were to click on number nine, it gives you those two choices. It's saying, okay, do you want to do the polynomial root finder or do you want to do the simultaneous equation solver? So you have those options there. Uh, and you'll notice they also have some help features, which is nice because not everybody knows they're here. Not everybody knows what to do. All right, so I just wanted to kind of share that. So if I just go to number two, you know, you can have anywhere from two to 10 equations, okay? Two to 10 unknowns, and that's a, a great thing there. Uh, and so uh, one thing that, you as a teacher should remind your students. So down at the bottom here, you'll see where it says main and help and next. Those are your soft keys, okay, that are on the screen and they are supposed to match up with the uh, five buttons along the top of your calculator. So the Y equals window, zoom, trace, graph. So if you were going to solve two equations, uh, you wanted to go to next. So if I was on the Inspire, I would just click on it, but I can't do it here. Uh, I would have to hit graph here to go to the next screen. And now I would type in these six boxes um, uh, to solve this system of equation. So it does have it, but you'll notice the difference between this calculator and the Inspire is these are locked into the AX plus BY form, okay? So you're going to be able to change, you know, the, um, the signs and the numbers, but you won't be able to change the, change the placement of the Xs and Ys. All right, so I just wanted to show you where it was. And if your students are using the 84 and they have to solve a system of equation, it's there uh, if they can put it into uh, standard form real quick, okay, for that. Uh, so hopefully that was something that that, that helped people. Uh, and then the same thing, you'll notice on the, I said the polynomial tools, you can solve polynomial equations, okay. Uh, whoops, didn't mean to go there. Uh, you can solve polynomial equations on both the Inspire and I just showed you on the 84 because it had those two, it had the polynomial root finder and the simultaneous equation. All right. Um, so those are available to you. So hopefully that was a little helpful there. Uh, what I love about with our functions, we also have a lot that we can do with our graphs. Okay. And one thing that, again, I learn something new so often with these calculators. Uh, it just blows my mind. So you'd think after, you know, however many, so the last 10, 12 years I've been using the Inspire that I'd know a lot. And I, I think I do, but I'm always learning something new and what to do with them. Uh, and one new thing that I learned and I love, love, love with the Inspire is that if I was on a graph page and I'm just going to, you know, type in, uh, let's just do this, X minus two uh, squared, and then we'll say minus five. Okay, so here's my um, my quadratic. Okay, uh, so if I wanted to find, there are multiple things I can find here on my quadratic using this graph. So if I go to my menu, analyze graph, and I can find the zeros where it hits the x-axis, the minimum because it's a low point on the curve. Okay, um, and then I can do calculus stuff, which we'll talk about in my next session in April 13th. Uh, so I got all of that. 
Uh, but one thing I, I, I recently learned, which I love, uh, is the trace function, okay? Uh, which you might say, well, the trace function's always been there. But something cool about this trace function is when I use the trace function and I go and trace along, it hits the zero and tells me what the zero is. And then if I go down, it tells me what the minimum is. So it hits the important points as you're going through. And I just love, love, love that feature. And it's something I haven't been using it for so long, which I just kicked myself. Uh, so if you are having students find the zeros or find the minimum graphically, this is a wonderful feature on the Inspire. So you might ask, well, does the 84 do that? Um, well, uh, unfortunately, let me clear some of this out of here. Uh, if we were to do the same thing uh, with respect to our uh, X minus two. And, uh, I forgot. I can't do this on my computer. And that that drives me nuts too. With with the eighty four on the computer. Not that I don't like the eighty four. It's just uh, stuff that I can't do. So um, looking at this, and if I hit the trace, you know, here, um, does it really show me the zeros? It showed me that, which was nice, but it didn't really show me that zero. Uh, so unfortunately, no, the 84 does not do that. Um, it doesn't tell me when I'm at the minimum. It doesn't tell me my zeros. So that's something that edges out with the Inspire for me. Um, but again, if you're an Inspire user, I thought I'd share that with you um, for, for your students. Uh, so also uh, with uh, changing of the graph entry, something I love about our calculators is that you can type it in in the function notation, you can type in, you know, sequential notation, you can type in, you know, polar notation, parametric. So there's different uh, types of notation you're gonna use. Of course, the ones that we use most often. So if we're in, go to our mode screen on our 84, uh, you'll notice that we have four different varieties that we can use. So the two that we're really gonna use there are the function and the sequence. So uh, we definitely get into some sequential situations where you're trying to find certain numbers of a sequence. Why not have your students put it in sequential mode so when they go to the y equals, uh, you'll have your, you know, what is your sequential uh, equation? Type in your sequence, you know, your, your you know, 2n plus 1, that's your sequence, and you want to find your first five terms, then you can go to your, you know, table, and they're all going to be right there for you. So why not use that feature when they're doing sequences and series? You know, it's going to make their life a little bit easier uh, and it might help you along the way as well. Um, so under the mode key, going to function or sequence, sequential mode is really good. Uh, now going with the Inspire uh, to change that, when we go to menu, graph entry, edit, okay, we have a little bit more variety than, than the 84. Uh, and the one that my students, once I show it to them, they love it as well. Uh, and that is relation mode, okay? So if we're doing relation mode, uh, that allows you to type in the equation no matter how it's written. And one of my favorite things, all right, uh, to type in is, is that. It's just typing in my point slope form. I love point slope form. Uh, it's it's just, it, there's no need to, I just, I just love the fact that I don't need to put it into MX plus B form uh, and I can type that in as a relation. I don't have to solve for Y. Uh, so that's just a nice little thing to, to remember about the Inspire is the relation mode. Uh, but you also have other fun little things. So other than function relation, of course, the uh, sequence mode as well. Uh, but there's an equation template, which you can type in different kinds of lines. So they have templates. So whenever you use a template on the Inspire, the template will open and it'll have empty boxes that you can fill in, uh, which is why this button right here is called our math template button. Okay. Um, so it has all your templates on there. So you have your slope intercept, standard form, and vertical line uh, that are available. Um, so that's there for students. So I just, I just like to show that in case you didn't know it was there, uh, for, for your classes. Okay. So we did that zoom choo, 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 choo. Now, one big thing with your, um, calculators is we went through the analyze graph on this one, the 84, 
uh, has its version of analyze graph. Okay. Um, oops, I, w I have to change back to my mood. Okay. So when we want to analyze that graph here, we would go to second trace to get all those same values there, the value of the zero, the min, max, and intersect uh, for that, uh, for you to use with your uh, students uh, as well. But also a very important screen, okay? Uh, and your students should really be comfortable with using this screen. And that is the um, window and the zoom screens. Okay, the window screen, they should know how to adjust a window with X min and max, Y min and max, because IB questions usually give you specific windows to use. They give you specific X's, specific Y's, specific domains, sp specific ranges. All right, that students should be able to type into their calculator. But they should also be familiar with how to zoom in and out and, and what these features stand for to make their life easier uh, when they are graphing. Because I was just doing a problem today with my students uh, where they graphed two equations, but they didn't see them. And so some of the students got a little frustrated because how do they fix the window to make it seem and uh, so they can see them. And so they have to know how to zoom out or zoom in or you know, look at different parts of the graph um, and be able to do that successfully. Now the Inspire is a little bit nicer uh, with that because you can actually grab the axes to zoom in and out, or you can grab the paper and move it around. So that's a nice feature that unfortunately the 84 doesn't have. So, uh, but again, kids need to be comfortable uh, with their screens. Um, so having said all that, uh, really quick, uh, I wanted to, to kind of show you a few of the questions uh, that are available to you uh, from topics one, two, and three uh, on the TIIB website. Um, again, just kind of looking at this is the style that you'll be given. Uh, so you'll see uh, a question and then you'll see the mark scheme here. Um, and then it's really kind of your call how far you want to push them with respect to the technology that they use uh, for this. So, um, uh, so looking at the, uh, like this question right here, just said uh, topic three, geometry and trig, uh, you'll notice that it says, Dan is building a wood container. So sometimes I try to use names that I'm aware of. Um, so basically, uh, that's my name. Uh, so this is for my own house where I'm trying to build something for my pool to hold all my stuff. Uh, so that's how I get creative. But again, uh, these are questions that, this is a Word document, so if you like this question and you want to use it again and again, you have the ability to alter these values, okay, and do whatever you want with them and make them, okay, hopefully better uh, or, you know, at least as 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 they are. Uh, and then they have the mark schemes and how things are broken down. Um, and I apologize, uh, I was going on, once I start rolling, uh, I kind of lost touch with the chat, okay. Um, but again, I just wanted to show you just some more. Um, here's a another geometry trig problem. Uh, I, you know, recruited my son to do a trapeze drawing for me uh, to to help me design this problem. Um, and this is kind of an angle of elevation depression problem for for your students, uh, kind of going through that. And um, so this is all the stuff that's available to you. Uh, and as uh, and I'm just kind of going to go through the questions really quick because I, I lost track of them. Um, and just real quick uh, was, how do you know whether it's it's the end or beginning? And somebody said, you know, for IB exams, it's always end. Thank you for saying that. Uh, just kind of going through these questions. Um, so some books have problems written. Yes, that does drive me nuts, too. Some books do write it with begin. I, I agree. Um, thank you for clarifying. Um, so let's see, a car, the function keys. Okay, you guys are also helpful. Thank you. Um, so thank you, thank you. Uh, ba ba ba. So yes, the Inspire does have some more features, um, but uh, but again, there's so much on the 84 too. Your kids are not going to be behind if they're using the 84. It's just there's some extra things on the Inspire that do speed things up a little bit. Um, so just kind of looking, let's see, do, do, do. oh my gosh. 
I just love every. Thank you so much. I know I've talked and I, and once I get rolling, I kind of just it's hard for me to stop, but um, I'm going to stop sharing now because we're about to end here. Uh, but I want to just just say thank you to everybody who is here. Hopefully some of the stuff that I showed you uh, was beneficial. If you knew everything, uh, I'm sorry, uh, but please, I'm going to put my email address right now. Um, and I want to hear from you. Dan is putting his email address in there. I'm going to remind you that in the chat is also the link to tonight's slides. And if you, uh, if you want more like this, or if you'd like us, you want me to spend more time on doing some sample problems uh, on in, in the second session, the April 13th session, I will alter to what you need. All right, because I'm here to help you. Everybody was so helpful in the chat. Thank you so much um, for everything. And I, I hope to see you again in April. Okay. Don't go away. <laughs> and I'm not gonna, yeah, don't go, don't leave yet. So go don't ahead. Go away. In the slides that you get with this download, the link that's there and that you'll be receiving in email, um, slides about uh, the information that Dan shared, remember it's recorded. So if you wanna go back and, and follow along as he's doing some things, you can do that at your leisure uh, exam structure. And yes, the new updated TI website, how prescient was that? <laughs> as you know, updated since yesterday, but the link there is the correct link to take you to those IB resources, and then um, some of the ideas that Dan shared with you about tips and tricks for the different calculators. Um, he's the chat is still going, so if you have questions, suggestions, comments to share out, go ahead and do that. And I'm going to wrap up here with our webinar drawing. So I used my random number in random integer generator, and tonight I use my 84. And the winner tonight is Elizabeth Elizabeth Iancone. Yeah, Yana Kone. I'm trying to imagine. Congratulations, Elizabeth. Yana Kone. Congratulations, Elizabeth. Um, you'll be receiving an email so you can identify which model of calculator you'd like to have. It's uh, Elizabeth <laughs> Yana Kone from New York, I believe. Thank you, Elizabeth, for being here with us tonight. Um, again, the documents that ch that link has been set in the chat. Those slides that Dan created for you all are are there. You can get um, a certificate of attendance for being here. I'll put that in the link as well. It'll also be in that document that you can download. That link is now in the chat. All right. Let's see what else. Um, That's pretty much it for me, Dan. Remember, <laughs> there's part two on April 13th, and yes. you registered for this one, so you know how to register for the next one. We'll keep the Thank chat you, open everybody. for another couple of minutes in case you have comments or suggestions to share. Dan, I'll say good night. Thank you so much, and you can have your closing comments. Thank you, everybody, for, for listening to me talk. And again, provide feedback. I'd love to hear uh what was good what you need to think needs to be tweaked uh i would love to hear it thank you so much have a great evening mm -hmm.